Hey guys and welcome to another HitFilm tutorial. Have you ever wanted to create realistic water simulation in HitFilm? Well you're in luck because today we're talking about Caustics. Caustics is really cool, it can allow you to create a bunch of different distortion effects with one very simple concept. Triumph's going to take you through this in his new guest tutorial. Take it away Mike! Caustics is one of the overlooked gems in HitFilm's effects. Caustics simulates a reflective or refractive plane, which makes it perfect for water, glass, and other distortion type effects. I'm Mike Miller, and today we're going to look at caustics in HitFilm. Here we are in HitFilm 4 Express. We're going to need to import some media that will be used to generate a background, environment map, surface texture, and bottom texture. Then we'll create a new composite shot, name it Ocean, and we'll just go ahead and make that 10 seconds. In this composite shot, we're going to drag in this image. We're also going to drag in this image, which is going to be used as our bottom texture. I'm going to hide this image underneath the sunset. Now I need to create a new plane. Then I'm going to come up and add the grid effect to this plane, convert the plane to 3D. I'm going to rename this plane Water Surface, then twirl open its transform controls. I want to rotate this to be parallel with the existing water. So I'm going to set the orientation to 90. Grab the control widget and move it down until it's more or less lined up with the horizon. If I zoom in, you can see that there's a bit of a tilt to the entire picture. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the widget, rotate this a little bit just so that that lines up correctly. I don't want to see the edges of this plane at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and scale up the plane until all four edges are off the screen. Then I'm just going to go ahead and move that plane back and forth in space a little bit until it again lines up with the horizon. I don't need this grid effect anymore, so I can just delete that. Let's add caustics. And nothing terribly thrilling is happening. So let's go into caustics and start taking a look at some of the effects. I'm going to skip down to this bottom texture, open that up, and select the image I already brought in. And now we can see something happening. Since caustics simulates a reflective and refractive planar surface, the bottom texture layer is what's behind or under that surface. Now that I've added a bottom texture, I can play with the depth slider and I can play with the refractive index. The refractive index determines how much light will bend as it crosses the planar surface. The default is 1.33, which is correct for water. Refractive indices of other materials can be found with a little bit of searching online. Since I'm doing water, I'm going to set that back to 1.33. We're going to skip over height map and surface texture and illumination and we're going to go all the way down to environment map. The environment map is the layer that's going to be reflected in the surface of our caustic plane. An environment map is wrapped around the inside of an infinite imaginary 3D sphere, and an environment map can be a still image, generated media, or even 360 degree video. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the sunset long image. The pre-blur slider blurs the image before it is reflected. I'm going to turn this down to zero. Amount sets the strength of the reflection. I'm going to turn this all the way up to 1. Angle dependency determines how light scatters off the surface. Higher values means less light is scattered. Basically, higher values will reduce the amount and strength of the reflection. I'm going to turn this all the way down to 0. Now that I can see the reflection in the surface, I can see that the reflected area isn't actually lining up with the horizon. I'm going to go back up to my control widget and just push that plane back in space until the reflection is lining up with my horizon again. Then I'm going to come back over into the caustics effect, and in the environment map group, I'm going to open up transform. The transform controls rotate the infinite sphere, and above that, we see these controls for texture scale and texture ratio. Texture scale changes the size of the apparent reflection. Texture ratio deals with how the texture is going to be stretched, to fit inside the sphere, and deals with the aspect ratio of the image. X-rotation rotates the invisible sphere around its x-axis. Same with Y-rotation and Z-rotation. I'm going to set my texture scale to 50, my texture ratio to 0.63, and then I'm going to set my X-rotation to 73, my Y-rotation to 67, and my Z-rotation to 180. My environment map is now pretty close to being an exact mirror rotation of the sky. But I do like to set up my environment map before I do anything with the height map. Leaving this as a flat mirrored plane makes it a lot easier 
to line things up. Let's go ahead and take a look at our height map. Well, we don't have one yet. We're going to need to create another composite shot for that. So I'm going to come down, create a new composite shot, and call it Height Map. In Height Map, I'm just going to drag in another copy of the plane I created earlier. Come up to Effects and add Fractal Noise. Then I'm going to jump back to my Ocean Comp, drag the Height Map composite in, go to my Water Surface Layer, go up to the Height Map settings for Caustics, twirl that open, and select the Height Map composite. And now we're getting a watery surface. These waves are a little too large and a little too chaotic to fit in nicely with our source image. But while I've got that open, let's talk about the controls under Height Map. Wave Height sets the maximum top and bottom height for the plane. So I'm going to come back into the Height Map and change the fractal noise to fit our scene better. I'm going to change the type of noise from clouds to swirl. I'm going to open up Transform and change the scale from 150 pixels to something a lot smaller, like 15. I want this fractal noise to animate. So I'm going to come up to the seed, enable keyframing for that, move to the last frame, and change the seed value to something else. I also want my water to flow a little bit. So I'm going to come down to position, enable keyframing. I want my water to move a little bit to the right, say 150 pixels, and I want my water to move closer to the camera, say 200 pixels. Now when I go back to my Ocean Comp, this is still not looking right. This is still way too choppy, too chaotic, and too bright. That's because our current settings in Caustics were set up to optimize setting up the reflection. Now we're going to tune this to make it look like good water. So I'm going to open up the Caustics effect again, and the first thing I want to do is change my wave height. Something around 5 looks about right for this. Then I want to go ahead and come down to my environment map and change those settings. I'm going to add about 8 pixels of pre-blur, and then I'm going to turn down the reflection amount a little bit, and I'm going to turn the angle dependency back up. Now if we take a second to RAM preview this, we're starting to get some very realistic water. So the fractal noise composite we've added is what's generating the height map that's determining the size of the water ripples in the ocean plane. But you don't have to use fractal noise as your height map source. You can use anything you want. Here we have a black plane with some white text on it. Let's drag that into our composite, go up to our water surface, open up the caustics effect, and change our height map to this new text. I'm going to turn the wave height up so we can see more clearly what's going on. You can see on the bottom of the screen, we now have a flat reflective plane with text inset into the surface. What this tells us is that black represents the high point of the height map and white represents the low point. This invert map button swaps those values. Now we have a lower water plane and text raising up out of the surface. This version of the height map has the same fractal noise we've been using before, except the colors have been changed to be two dark grays. White text has been keyframed to fade in and out. When we put this back on our ocean, we can see that this animates a text-shaped divot falling into our ocean surface. This is great for lower thirds. There's one last set of controls and caustics we haven't looked at yet, and that's illumination. But to get illumination to work, we're going to have to add a light. You can see now, as I move the light around the image, that the light is illuminating the plane. Caustics has its own material settings within the filter. So one thing I want to do is come down to the material settings for the layer and turn off illuminated. This prevents the light from affecting the layer twice. Now I can move the light around in 3D space and just line that up until I'm happy with it. I also want to change the color of the light from pure white to something that's actually in the image. Let's sample some of these yellows from the clouds. I want to come down and play with the illumination settings in the filter a little bit and just kind of try and dial this in a little bit more. At this point, it's going back and forth between the illumination and the environment map settings and just kind of playing with the sliders until you get the look you're after. Now that I have my full water texture in there, I want to go ahead and check my horizon again. It looks like I've pushed the horizon a little bit too far. 
and I'm just going to keep tweaking that until I'm happy with my horizon. One last thing I want to mention in the illumination controls. I've turned the environment map off, and I've added a second light to the scene. So I now have two lights, a purple light and a green light. If you come up to the illumination settings, you'll see this drop-down, which currently says Comp Lights. If I twirl this down, I can change this to Selected Lights. Now I can manually pick up to four of the scene's lights to use in the caustics effect. So I can use just the purple light or just the green light. This may be useful if you have a light in your scene that you don't want to affect your caustics plane. One other thing I can do to improve the look of this is add a little bit of atmospheric haze. I'm going to come down to the bottom left, go into my composite shot properties, advanced, and enable depth fog. Depth fog simulates atmospheric haze. I'm going to change the settings and set the near clip distance to 1500. I'm going to change the far clip distance to 5000. I'm going to change the density to 0.1, and then I'm going to grab the eyedropper and I'm going to go sample a color from right here on the horizon. Hit OK. It's a subtle difference, but it does help blend the back edge of the water into these distant hills. And just to refine this a bit, I'm going to add a light flare and a vignette. There's one last thing I'm going to do. I'm going to come down to my sunset image duplicate that and rename this Golden Gate Top Mask. And then I'm going to come down and use the freehand mask. Once I've drawn that mask, I'm going to feather it in by about eight pixels. And I'm going to take Golden Gate Top Mask and I'm going to bring it above water surface. That just brings in some more of the existing shoreline and a little bit of the pylon base of the bridge that was cut out before. Now there's actually one other control in caustics that we haven't talked about yet, and that's the surface texture layer. I'm just gonna go ahead and load in this United Federation of Planets logo. I'm going to come down to the environment map, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn amount all the way down to zero. Then when I come back up to surface texture, you can see that the surface texture layer is simply mapped onto the surface of the caustics plane. Note that the surface texture by default is completely opaque. I'm gonna right click on this and convert it to a composite shot, and turn the opacity down to about 25. We can see that by turning the opacity of the texture down, now we can see through the water surface to the bottom texture layer. And that pretty much covers using caustics to make a water plane. The caustics effect is also great for simulating invisibility or cloaking effects, like in the movie Predator. I just have a background plate, and then I have two composite shots being used. The first one is just this green screen Predator clip. The background has been keyed out, and it's been brought in over the background image. Predator Caustics has a caustics effect on it, and then after the caustics, I've put a set mat using another copy of the same composite shot as an alpha mat. On top of that, I have another copy of the same video, which also has a set mat applied. But that set mat is using this opacity map. Put it all together, and you get this. Caustics doesn't even have to use transparency or refraction. Use an opaque surface texture, use a height map similar to the one you see above, and you get something that kind of looks like a flag. So, I hope you found this discussion of caustics helpful. I'm Mike Miller. Thanks for sitting through this tutorial, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. As you know, we make tutorials every Thursday, so come on back if you want to see some more cool content in a week.